Hi guys, I'm uh, Bob Ross Tran. That's a joke, actually, um, because uh, Bob Ross, and I didn't really realize that. I, di I actually didn't know who Bob Ross was until people pointed it out, and then I looked at all the videos, and I'm like, oh crap, that's going to be a joke for a very long time. <laughs> but um, hi, I'm uh, Ross Tran, and uh, I am a concept artist uh, based out in LA. Um, yeah, you guys probably have seen me from my videos, uh, probably, and all the explosion and everything. Um, but in person, you know, I'm just, I'm just looking a little more chill, you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of people want to know uh, how, like, I got to making videos and why I made, like, videos and how I started and everything. Um, I grew up uh, as an only child, and so I would uh, get lost, you know, in my own world a lot. And um, I spent a lot of time at my grandma's house, um, and I didn't really have any siblings to play with, so I didn't play with myself, but I... <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, my grandma had a really big backyard, and I would just uh, make my own characters. You know, there's lots of room to play, and I would make my own, like, kind of world and stuff, and I would get lost in them, and I would want to come back in the house and draw them. And so I would, uh, like, draw and, like, try to draw TV shows, like Powerpuff Girls and Sailor Moon and all the animes and TV shows and stuff like that. And it was just so much fun, and I just loved to draw. Um, and then around maybe five or six or seven, um, uh, my dad was like, all right, you got your uh, fun phase out of the way, you know, it's time to, you know, time to study math. It's time to study science <laughs> and things. Um, and I'm like, oh, I still want to draw. And it was kind of hard for me to draw with um, having him, like, kind of watch over me because he didn't want me to do that. Um, so I drew on everything. And he, you know, he, like, I don't blame him. He uh, grew up in a certain uh, household society where, um, art wasn't like a, like, you know, like a viable option into making them as a career. Um, so he would kind of punish me um, if he saw me, like, if he see me do art and stuff like that, he would uh, kind of put me in timeout or he would hit me or something like that. Um, so it was hard for me to draw and I had to kind of sneak around and I would only draw in school. You know, I would draw on the desk. I would draw on my homework. I would draw on like everywhere and um, try to avoid drawing at home because I couldn't. Um, and then, uh, so I didn't draw for like a long time um, until I think in uh, middle school, uh, my uh, parents uh, uh, got divorced and uh, my, my dad left the house and uh, suddenly I found my love to draw again and it was so much fun. Um, I, you know, I like, I, I went home and all I did was draw, you know, I was like, mom, I want to, I want that uh, $1,200 Cintiq right away. I don't know how to draw, you know, but I want a Cintiq because that's what everyone's using. So my mom bought it for me and wait, where's my mom? She's, she's here somewhere. Hi, Mom. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so, like, I thought um, you needed technology in order to be an artist and stuff like that. But, and then uh, I forgot, you know, you had to do the foundation. You know, you had to study. You had to draw. And uh, you had to learn. And when I, like, went online to research um, about all this stuff, I didn't realize how much uh, like foundation and study going to actually drawing art, and I found that you could actually make a living off of doing this. And I was like, "Fuck yeah, I want to do." Sorry. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, I want to do this as a, we're streaming. We're, I want to do this as a career. Um, so uh, I looked up summer courses and things, and uh, my mom sent me here when I was 16 um, to do a summer course, um, and that's where I went. I met Michael. Um, and he was one of my first teachers, um, and uh, all, I would, all, all I wanted to do was learn because we're like, I'm in a new environment and with new students and new classes. I've never been in this place before. You know, I've been like hidden in my cave. And I was like, oh man, I can't wait to absorb the world and what the world has to offer. Um, and so I stayed here the summer, um, and then I looked more school. And then I was like, mom, I want, to, uh, I want to do this for a living. And my mom's like, you know, a science degree is generally a better idea. Um, and then I told my dad, I was like, Dad, I, like, I want to go to an art school. And he was like, I heard the word art, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not there. I, I, don't, I don't know, Ross. Um, but, you know, like, I have to like, think about myself. Like, this is my life, you know, and this is what I want to do. And regardless if you support me or not, I'm going to support myself and try to find ways to support myself to do what I love. Um, so they were on board with me. Uh, my mom wasn't thrilled about me applying to one school. So when she got the acceptance letter, she uh, was like, Ross, oh my god, you got, you got accepted to college. My, my, my life is over or something, I don't know. But I, I, I moved to um, L.A. to um, do it, and uh, 
it was fun. It was cool. Um, I studied uh, at Art Center, um, you know, study design and things like that. And then I got my first job, um, I think a few months later. And I was so excited. My first job at a studio. And um, I, was, I was so pumped that first day. And it, it was at West Studio. I remember, you know, he had a cat. And he was like, Ross, you know, it's your first job. We're going to give you your first assignment. And my first assignment was... Uh, I, I think move, it, it was for the Star Wars Connect game, and it was literally moving a drone four times. Um, and it was, it was like, I was, I, it was not what I expected. And I was like, oh man, I, I, don't, I don't know if I can do this for a living. I don't know if I can move drones and, and, and move 3D models and things. Um, so I kind of just, after that job, I kind of just uh, regrouped. I was like, Okay, um, I'm not sure I can do this yet. Maybe I'm not good enough where I can actually create my own stuff, so I have to keep practicing. And uh, so I just kept practicing and practicing. Um, and then I got a, my friend referred me to a job um, right off the bat. Um, it was for a Disney movie. Um, and it, it was Disney owned at the time. It was called Earth Echo. Um, and, uh, and director Dave Green, um, which recently directed Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtle 2. Sorry. And uh, so that was his debut film, uh, Earth Echo. And we, I got in the studio, and it was, it was really cool. It was really awesome because I, d I didn't expect um, that to kind of launch off so quickly. And so when I designed the character, and they called me up to the studio head, and it was like the top floor of the penthouse, and people, and they made the design of Earth the Echo, my design, and they made a pup out of it. And I didn't expect that. I was like 19, and I walked in there, and they're like, Oh, Ross, um, can you give us some notes on this character? We want to make it better. And I was just standing there and looking at the toy and looking at them. I'm like, I didn't say anything for five minutes. Like, Ross, can, can, can you give us some critique? I'm like, I, 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 I don't know what to say. It's, I, 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 I didn't feel like I was in a position to give feedback on something um, because I wasn't exposed to it. And... Uh, Production designer came in and pulled me out, and it was like, it was so real. And that moment, you know, I'll never forget it, where you look at your design, and I, I think Dan can say too, like, you look at your design in real life, and you're like, holy crap, this is actually happening, this is real. Um, so um, after, that, uh, after that movie, um, it was really cool, you know, I made great connections, um, but I didn't feel like, uh, I didn't feel that I loved what I was doing too much. Like I, like, I wanted to make people laugh. You know, I wanted to jump out of my seat or sometimes. I wanted to make sound effects and do things. Um, and so I just moved to L.A. to do acting. Um, and so out of left field, I left all my art. I was like, all right, let's, let's do the whole acting thing, you know, because I finally have the confidence um, after being in Shell um, most of my childhood to actually try to, like, you know, come out and just try to do something completely different, fall on my face, do something. And it was fun, you know. Um, I got some cool acting gigs. And then it's like, I miss art. And, <laughs> and so I was like, all right, I don't know what to do. Um, so I went into my room, and I spent a week doing nothing but playing with my camera and doing art. And I was like, hmm, what if this happened? What if this happened? Like I, I, like, I want to make people laugh, and I want to draw. And how do I do that? That's so freaking hard. Because I don't know, like, there's not like a, there's not a role model for me to come to and say, oh, I want to, you know, like follow in this person put stuff until I found out about Seth MacFarlane and then now he's the kind of my role model um but yeah so I put my vi first video out there and it was so scary you know it's like putting yourself out to the world um and uh I think that first video uh drawing Daenerys Targaryen uh and like all my friends shared it and I'm like holy crap this this is weird this is awesome and I'm having so much fun and I'm getting to draw and people are laughing hopefully not at me but that's the, the content. Um, and uh, yeah, and so uh, ever since then, hey, um, ever since then, yeah, so uh, that's kind of uh, a few months ago. So I started my channel like eight months ago, and I just graduated. Um, and uh, yes, that's what we are here. So just wanted to share that story of how I got here. Yeah, so now we will make this go away. There you go, okay. So uh, this is a bus stop painting. I um, I painted a few months ago. Um, it's really special to me. Um, I have a lot of work in progress paintings in my archives. Um, this was started maybe five, four years ago, and uh, I have like 
uh, like I like to leave things unfinished and then come back with a fresh eye. So I'll, I'll always be having a fresh eye on things. And when I get bored, I don't work on it anymore. I move on to um, a, a, like another piece that I've worked on. And I'm really uh, kind of proud of this image um, because uh, it's been like, like I, I, like I never knew what to do with it. Um, but I think recently and where I am in life and uh, everything, I found the opportunity to bring it to life. And so, uh, yeah, the bus stop. And uh, this is uh, two images from my Astro series. I love drawing portraits, and I thought maybe it would be cool if uh, I uh, make a series of portraits where, like, um, these beautiful ladies um, are, like, like illuminated um, by light in darkness, in space or something, and we could appreciate all their beauty. And, uh, yeah, so these are two images from uh, that series. And uh, this is an uh, image um, for my um, project about Atlantis sirens. This was started, um, the project was 2012 when I was uh, at uh, Intern at Art Center. And this is the thing about having stuff that's work in progress. Um, I haven't touched this project for uh, maybe four years until uh, my graduation. Um, so I thought it was a great time to bring it back. You know, that first year I started, oh, cool, mermaids, about mermaid hunters. It's really cool. And I didn't touch it until. Um, graduation, um, and so I thought, you know, from all my uh, learning, all my studies, all my foundation and everything, I kicked it up a notch, and uh, I was really proud of uh, what I did with it. Yeah. Cool, and uh, these are some more people from uh, the gang, Mermaid Hunters. They all got a little reboot. I'm really proud of this uh, project, and uh, I'll probably resume it in a few years and to see uh, where it would go next. But yeah, had no plans for it. Um, yeah, so this image is uh, oh, whoa. It's called <laughs> called Grandma's House, and it's, yeah, I'm coming, there you go. It's called Grandma's House, and it's actually one of my favorite paintings I've ever done, um, because I can fully say that it's crafted with 100% love. It's for my grandma, and she recently passed away um, when I made this. And it was the first death that ever kind of, like, I've ever felt. You know, no one really close to me had died before. But she passed away, and uh, I really loved her. She was, like, my best friend. And so I wanted to craft something um, that's full of her memories and full of her experiences and just want to really feel that peace. And I probably, it's crazy because I probably cried at one point when I made this. But this is just, like, a place for her and uh, things she loved, and uh, I really love this painting. And uh, this one is uh, Umbrella Lady. I like playing with um, like a just like time zones, and I'm really into like Japanese culture, and uh, so I just try to combine it. And if you've seen my work, that's that purple magenta fuchsia kind of thing is probably one of my favorite colors, and so uh, you'll probably see in the next couple of slides. But yeah, uh, Umbrella Lady. And uh, so, Nima, um, I started this in class, too, for a project, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited, you know, I'm developing, um, like, uh, her world right now, and her book, and um, Dan actually helped inspire me to keep pushing forward, because he's got that whole movie deal thing. <laughs> um, anyway, but, <laughs> oh, shrug, whatever. <laughs> So Nima um, represents, um, I think, all my characters, and I think all your characters and all your creation should be an extension of yourself. You know, what you're putting out in the world should be crafted with your stories and your storytelling and your experiences. And Nima represents um, me in the past, you know, um, like, more calculated. She's more introverted, you know. She's, like, she's alone, and she's, like, I love writing stories about her. You know, I can dig deep into my past and create something that, an extension of who I am. And um, this is what the project is, and she's a, like a grim spirit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is her, and I like doing layout pages. Um, and so this is uh, probably gonna be a page in the book. Um, I like doing, even if no one reads it, you know, I just kind of put that there, because I like expanding the world and stories of my characters, and put stats, you know, attack, defense, you know, I'm a big Smash player, so I like, like putting character pages and speed, and temperature, because we all need to know people's temperatures. Um, and <laughs> logos and things. But yeah, cool. 
And uh, this is uh, called Spectre. Um, it's uh, it's another like like one to make a still shot of uh, maybe you know they're they're at a train track, you know, about to hunt some spirits. Um, I love snow and uh, and apparently cats, and just kind of embody this um, kind of eerie kind of feeling. And I am really proud of this image. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is a uh, part of the gang. You know, I wanted to make something uh, s more stylized, and that's the thing. It's like um, I I think people are sometimes too trapped about like oh man, like I want to develop a style. Or I want to, um, like, how do I differentiate my work from other people? And um, y I'm sure you guys will touch on this, too, about what to put in your portfolio. But I think a portfolio should be an extension of yourself. You know, when a person's hiring, they want to hire you for you and the story you bring. And, like, every experience that you feel that you will put on the canvas is an extension of who you are. And not just like, all right, this is A pose and B pose and C pose. And because like, like I feel like you don't want to be like a worker and a robot. You know, you want to be this like the sort of voice and say, hey, this is my design. This is my story. And I think that if you could find that within yourself and you know, dig deep and then put that on a portfolio, people will feel that because energy translates and they will see what you have to offer and find out what's special in you, and they'll hire you.